it might sound funny, but you can come across, you know, clients who might have five plus million dollars in investments, but they struggle to enjoy life. Their relationship with money and wealth is one where they struggle to make decisions that can maybe create life experiences. And I always say to people, you know, when we go through this exercise, one of the real benefits is understanding that you're okay, the the things you're doing and being comfortable that you can afford to go on that holiday. Mm -hmm. You know, if some people will have spending issues that are, you know, very high lifestyle and not putting enough away, but there's many people who they struggle to treat themselves to a holiday or to treat their family to a holiday because they're so worried about this destination in retirement. And I've seen it happen where you have, you know, a client that has all the wealth that they need to sustain a, you know, a good retirement, but you don't know when you're going to go and you have people at 65, you know, passing away and you don't want to be the person who's, you know, waited to do and enjoy life and do all these things when you retire only to die young. Right. I think you want to, I think, so the freedom of it is having the confidence that you can still put money away for retirement, but enjoy your life, whatever, however you define that, uh, along the way. So the journey, not just the destination. Yeah. 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 Well, especially in healthcare, it's a lot of those delayed gratification type folks, right? You're just like, okay, well, we're going to do 12 years of school or however long it winds you, up being. And then... You, carry that philosophy on forwards. Yeah, and you can't take the wealth with you. And we're not saying be be foolish with money, but it, it really comes down to when you when you have, you know, you might say, well, I make 300000 or $400,000 a year, whatever it is, but we're only allowed to live off of $100,000 a year. You can, like, you know, understanding that, you can, okay, here's what happens if we bump it, and this means that, you know, an extra 50000 you might have an extra thirty to 35000 after tax. But that's your family vacation. Mm-hmm. And you're doing life experiences and creating those life experiences with your kids and your grandkids, et cetera. So you, you get to I mean, you be a participant, I guess, in life and, and not just wait, wait to do things that are fun. You don't want to overdo it. No. Everything's in balance, right? Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> so retirement planning and then incorporation. Okay. So... Uh, I think we're, we're, we're going to be touching on things like taxes. So uh, I touched a bit on it earlier, but when we were talking about how uh, as you hit $50,000 of passive income, the small business deduction, the 11% rate uh, that you have uh, at the small business deduction level, that gets whittled away for every dollar. I think it's $5 that you, you lose. So um, being smart about what type of um, investments are in there. You don't want to have a bunch of interest that, you know, bearing investments that are fully taxable, mm-hmm. ideally more capital gains skewed. Um, but I think this is where the IPP helps to protect some of that, um, gives you deductions that are fairly sizable, but even with an IPP, many are going to run into this issue. So it's not all horrible. The one thing, it just changes the type of dividends that you pay out. So. Uh, when when you're in a uh, when when you earn income and you pay taxes at the uh, small business deduction level, non-eligible dividends um, tax differently than corporate income that's you know active income that's earned and taxed at the highest rate. It all comes down to you know the the goal of Finance Canada and I guess CRA is that you should be indifferent about whether you earn salary or dividends. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't have any real advantage. Years ago, there was, you know, bigger differences there that allowed for, you know, business owners to have that advantage, right? And that's largely income sprinkling, right? Income sprinkling, TOSI rules really got rid of all that, um, make it a lot more difficult to to, uh, do that kind of thing. And so what are the benefits of incorporating then today? Well, I think right off the bat, you know, if you don't need, if, let's say you're making 400000 if you don't need $400,000 to sustain your lifestyle, you will build up wealth in your corp mm-hmm. a lot faster. So maybe you pay one hundred fifty or $200,000 out. You're still accumulating wealth, net of taxes around, you know, call it 178000 a year if you had $200,000 that you're retaining. So, you know, you can still, you're, you're moving your goals down the line. You have, you know, call it 11 cent dollars to, to work with versus maybe closer to 40, depending mm-hmm. on what your tax bracket is and which province you're in. 
And so the idea there is like you make money, it stays in your corporation, and then instead of paying yourself and buying investments, and then you've paid taxes on that payment to yourself in the interim, you just leave it in your corporation and then use that to buy the investment. So you haven't paid any taxes yet, and then that snowballs over the years. Yeah, you paid, you paid taxes uh, on the earnings that were retained in the corporation, and then every year, you know, if you have dividend income, capital gains, or interest income in your portfolio of investments, then you'll be taxable on that. The one thing to note that's, uh, you know, recommended, I would say, is every, you know, each year your portfolio will generate ideally some capital gains that are realized. When you're paid taxes at the corporate level for capital gains, it gets credit to what's called a capital dividend account. Those that account can be paid out tax-free to you personally. I think a lot of accountants like to wait till it's about $10,000. So at any time you hit roughly $10,000, pay it out tax-free to yourself. Mm -hmm. um, keep sweeping that out when you can. And then so on the other side of things too, you can also expense things from your corporation account. And then... Versus sure, if it's tied to business purposes and, and sort of, you know, Various accounts will be more aggressive, and yeah. you know, I, I'm not going to sit here and say what you should and shouldn't do. But usually, it tied to business purposes. Otherwise, it ends up being, you know, treated as a shareholder loan. I used to wonder, you know, like why restaurants would give away receipts. It just baffled me for most of my life. Like, you're not going to try to go get a refund on your burger and fries you just had. But then you get into medical school, and uh, the doctors take the whole team out for lunch just constantly all day every day and then they would always keep the receipt a hundred percent of the time i'm assuming that had to do with that yep. incorporation and uh yep. tax and business deduction yeah yeah only 50 percent of meals is deductible but <laughs> it's still better than the half half of that yeah uh is there any other benefits then to like incorporating or starting that corp account in terms of uh I think the real one is a deferral and the accumulation of wealth faster, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's the biggest one. Um, you know, I think when you're looking early on, there, there would be some benefits if you were taking dividends versus paying yourself salary and having to contribute to CPP, right? So you could get more money out or to yourself, I guess, tax efficiently. Minor benefit, but still you're not contributing, you know, when you're contributing both the employee and the employer uh, component, it's add, it adds up. And when you're maybe more in residency and you're not necessarily um, making the big dollars yet. When roughly do you tip that threshold or when should a person expect to, now is a good time to go through that process and incorporate? The way I've often heard it told to me from accountants is when your income starts to surpass what your needs are, mm -hmm. that's when you want to set it up. So okay, so as soon as you're like net yeah. positive. So maybe, you know, 80 to 100K, you're probably using most of that for your living expenses. As soon as it, you know, pushes beyond that, you know, that's when you probably want to start looking at that deferral. Now, is it just those living expenses? Because the, again, advice I was given and why I haven't done this yet is because I still have all the student loans and debt to pay off. And so I'm like factoring that in as living expenses of, okay, well, this money's just going straight yeah. there. Like, is that still true or should you still incorporate and then run things? Is there any well, kind of tie there? I mean, I think I would, I would look at it from the standpoint, you know, if, if you're still dealing with debt, you can still pay money out. You can pay it as a dividend if you want to. You give yourself more flexibility, I mm -hmm. guess. You may not, when you may not put as much money towards debt. You might have other things you want to do, or, or maybe you want to invest in something with your corp. So you can, I think it'll be really situational dependent, but it really comes down to most people are going to be focused on debt. Ideally, you can just crush the debt as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so if you wait till that, that would be fine. I, I, but deferring wouldn't, or doing it sooner, sorry, wouldn't be a horrible thing either. It just depends on, you know, maybe you're slowing down how quickly you're paying down the debt. And I, for your de uh, doctors too, I don't know how much of it would be. Most of it's going to be line of credit. So it's not, not the Canadian student loans that are giving you nice tax tax deductions. Yeah, yeah. So, so paying it out and 
getting that paid off is helpful. And then does it matter if you're single or married? Like, does that really weigh into it much, whether or not you've got a partner? Well, I, I think it really depends on how households. Some households run, um, you know, my money's my money, your money's your money, and, mm -hmm. and you have separate plans for each, each person. Others where you look at it kind of, it's a team approach, and what makes the most sense, how we advance the goalposts as much as possible, keep moving our goals forward. So then it might come down to maybe maybe you're accelerating the debt the reduction because your spouse is helping contribute to it. Yeah. And what does like the whole discussion over like life insurance, does that become a moot point if you're just a young single person with a bunch of unsecured line of credits from the bank? Like the bank will be mad if you die or upset. But like does it make sense to go down that road if you aren't married? If you're not married I would say you want to still protect, like take care of your debts. You don't want to leave a mess for people. <laughs> That's frowned upon. Yeah. I would say the other part is, um, you know, it's not uncommon that you end up having people having health issues in their early 30s, you mm -hmm. know. Especially, I mean, I've seen it with, with clients, you know, women after having kids, all of a sudden, you know, MS or certain things come up and then you can't get insurance. So I think I think getting things... Getting the foundations, it doesn't cost a lot. And if you're really worried about the cost, you know, you can start off with a term 10 policy versus a term 20 and convert it to a term 20 a couple of years later when you get a bit more established. So there is flexibility there. I think the big part is, is just, it doesn't cost a lot. You know, you probably spend more on car insurance and home insurance than you would on, on your life insurance policy when you're that young. Or yeah, the, but the, in reality, or, you yeah. are the biggest asset, as you mentioned. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, in general, I mean, is there anything else you think would make sense, or, or is it like a must know for an early stage physician or other healthcare professional to know? You know, we covered sort of the basics on insurance in terms of incorporation, in terms of like starting your retirement savings plan. Is is that sort of the big three, or is there anything else critical up front to look at? I think it just comes down to if you're goal focused and you want to move things along and, and maybe play catch up, I guess, because you've spent more time in school. I think having a plan, you know, the earlier you have one and get some good coaching and advice on how to advance your goals as quickly as possible and most efficiently. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, the last thing you want to be is 55 or 60 talking to someone like myself and, uh, you know, can you help me? I want to retire next year. Yeah. Well, we don't have time on our side anymore. So it, what we, we can do is we can, you know, probably have a bit more focus and intent and, 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 and be a bit more strategic about how we advance those goals early on, which will help you build your wealth and hopefully have uh, a better overall, you know, path to your ideal lifestyle, I guess. And then will the financial planners, will they help you with the fun money side of things too? You know, if you just want to get a new Tesla and you're trying to figure out how to like manage your TFSA or is all the pragmatic long-term No, I, I mean, listen, uh, people, if, if, if owning a Porsche or a Tesla is one of your goals, then we, we figure out what it is that you want to do and, and when do you want to reward yourself, right? If that's what you want. And then we show you what that means for your cash flow and how that impacts all your other goals. So that'll be a part of the uh, comprehensive plan as well. Yeah, it's not for us to say no. What you want to do, I mean, if you're spending way more than you're bringing in, obviously you've got a problem and we'll have to, you know, be a bit more, uh, I don't know if the right word is stern, but kind of, hey, you might want to ease up on, you know, some of this. But if you're, uh, you know, doing a lot of things, and I think the idea is when you get the help, you're probably doing a lot of little things right mm -hmm. that help advance all your goals anyway. So if you get to a certain point and you want to reward yourself, that's part of, I think, hard work sometimes. I'm Dr. Jordan Balrath, and you've been watching Cherry Live, brought to you by Cherry Health. Please like and subscribe to see more clips like this, or check us out at www.cherry.health, Canada's medical network.